All right, here we go. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis officially in the presidential race. The rollout wasn't smooth, but his interview with Trey Gowdy was. But he brushed off the Twitter glitches in the first post uh, announcement interview, calling the launch alongside CEO Elon Musk a success. We had a huge audience. It did. It was the biggest they'd ever had. It did break the Twitter space. And so we're really excited with the enthusiasm. But ultimately, it's about the future of our country. His competitor, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy, has been in for quite some time and making some great progress. Vivek, what do you think of the rollout yesterday? Look, I'm glad Ron DeSantis is finally in the race. I think it's good to have declared candidates who are formally in. And, Brian, I think competition breeds strength. So I look forward to debates on the substance. I know it probably wasn't the smoothest rollout for him. I can empathize with some of the technical snafus that a candidate might go through. But put that to one side. That's not the important part. The important part is now we have to elevate the debate about what we stand for and why we stand for it. And that'll make the party better. It'll make the country better. And I'm in this to answer what it means to be an American. And I'm going to be ch challenging every one of the other candidates to rise to the same occasion. How many days have you been on the road so far since you declared? Most of the days. I am mostly in the early states, Iowa, New Hampshire, spending a lot of time in Michigan and South Carolina and other states as well. One of the things that people are hungry for across the country, Brian, is open conversation. There is this gap between what people feel free to say in private right. and what they're saying in public. We need to close that gap. And that's what this campaign is all about, speaking the hard truths. And, and my sense is the early states, what I love about the early states, especially New Hampshire and Iowa, is that they're, they're hungry to speak openly and they're unafraid to do it. And so I'm enjoying those conversations on the ground. I'll be back in Iowa later this week. What I love that you did is you went in Chicago, inner city Chicago, that many people in Chicago gave up on and Republicans don't even try for. Why did you do it? What did you find? I think one of the things we needed to do in the GOP is we have to show up. I went to the inner city of Chicago, talked to a room full of people who don't agree with me on everything. I got pressed on my position on affirmative action against racial rep reparations, against race-based quota systems. So we disagreed with most in the room on that. But we agreed on the importance of a secure southern border, that America first means protecting all Americans. There are migrants now flooding the inner city of Chicago. That's not good for the people who live there either. And so what I discovered, Brian, is that even though we don't agree on everything, we can find common cause in the basic principles. And I think people there respected me for coming. I left with friendships that I didn't have. I think that's going to be good for our party. And I'm confident that we can win 2024 in a landslide if we do what Reagan did in 1980. Reagan went to the South Bronx. I'm going to go there, too. I'm going to Kensington, Pennsylvania. We're traveling the inner cities of this country. And I think just showing up gives us a lot of credit. And I'm challenging my fellow competitors in the field to do the same thing, because that's going to be good for our movement. And here's your headline. It says, why my competitors should take my lead and visit America's inner cities. They are falling apart. They do need some leadership. And it's almost as if uh, they're begging for another choice. You also heard some tensions towards Democrats. In what respect? Real quick. Yeah, so look, Democrats talk a big game about lifting black Americans. Well, look how effective Joe Biden's policies, even Lyndon Johnson's policies from six decades ago have been. Black Americans are economically worse off today than they were in the 1960s. What we really need are policies that lift up all Americans. That's what I'm focused on. I think that's what people are hungry for. And I think we can deliver it, Brian. I'm all confident. Right. Uh, Vivek, moving up in the polls uh, slowly but surely. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Best of luck. Thank you.